everyone, welcome to this short introduction to machine learning. This is a course that we developed for the Bridging the Technological Gap workshop at the German Primate Center. And we got some great feedback on this, so we thought it might be a good idea to re-record this um, for a wider audience and provide this on YouTube. And my name is Arne Nix. I did my bachelor's and master's at RWTH Aachen University and this was in computer science. Now I'm doing a PhD at University of Tübingen and University of Göttingen with Professor Fabian Sins, where I'm mostly working on trying to transfer robustness properties between biological and artificial neural networks. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Mohamed, and um, I did my bachelor's in electrical and electronic engineering in Malaysia. After that, I moved to Germany, uh, Munich, to continue with my master's in um, neuroengineering at Technical University of Munich. And at the moment, um, I'm also doing my PhD with Professor Fabian Sins at University of Tübingen and Göttingen. And my work is uh, mainly focused on developing probabilistic models for visual sensory neurons. Let us start by defining what machine learning is. Machine learning is the process of designing machines or algorithms that can learn from the data to perform a certain task. And the important aspect of the definition is learning from the data. And hopefully as we go through the content, it becomes more and more clear what does that actually mean. Machine learning algorithms have already proven quite useful in many different domains. For instance, in computer vision, these algorithms are widely used and have seen a lot of success. Here you see an example of an algorithm that reconstructs a 3D scene by only knowing about some images that has been taken from that scene. And once you have such a model, you can perform other tasks with it, such as depth estimation that you see on the right. Language is another domain where we already use machine learning in our daily life by verbally communicating with our phones and have the phones perform certain tasks. We have also seen important progress in medicine using machine learning algorithms. Here is an example where the model generates a 3D structure of a protein by only knowing the sequence of amino acids in that protein. Behavioral studies is another domain where, for instance, you can track the movement of the subject by simply defining some key points on the subject and the algorithm will keep track of those key points only using the video input. And finally, image synthesis. This is rather related to computer vision, but it's still worth mentioning. Here you see an image that has been generated by the algorithm for a specific input text that describes the image. In this particular example, the text was monkeys bridging the technological gap. Playing around with these models can actually be quite fun and the images that they generate from the text can be quite impressive. And we also use these models to generate the title images for each topic in this short course. So you'll see more of these images as we go through the content. And of course, the list can go on, but I think we can all agree that these algorithms can indeed be useful in solving complex tasks. Before we move on, let us also clarify the distinction between machine learning and artificial intelligence. And the difference is really about learning from the data. So of course, we could come up with some rules and put them together to have an agent perform some intelligent behavior. But if those rules, instead of being specified by us, are actually learned from the data, then that falls into machine learning. And another buzzword is deep learning, which is a subdomain of machine learning that covers a specific type of models that can learn from the data to perform some complex tasks. And we will cover deep learning in some detail today. Now, machine learning algorithms, as we have already seen, can perform a variety of tasks. And depending on the type of task, one can group these algorithms into different classes. Here I'm going to highlight three major classes of machine learning algorithms, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning is mainly focused on defining the relationship between two quantities. For example, you may own an ice cream shop and you want to know the relationship between the temperature and how many ice cream is sold in a day. So the x-axis here would be the average temperature in a day 
and the y-axis is the amount of money you earned selling ice cream on that day. And you want a model that accurately captures the relationship between these two quantities. So in the future, you can make a prediction of the sales and maybe even decide whether it's worth to open the shop or not. Um, here is another example where um, a machine learning algorithm can identify the objects in the video. Um, and so maybe this can be useful in autonomous driving to avoid bumping into, um, into people or other cars. Unsupervised learning, on the other hand, is not about prediction, but rather finding meaningful aspects in the data itself. So if you go back to our ice cream shop, we could record both temperature and how sweet the ice cream flavors are. And then um, when we visualize the data, maybe we see groups of data appear for a specific combination of our quantities. For instance, maybe we could see that on the warmer days, sweeter ice creams sell more. And that information could be useful in advertising or even producing ice cream on a certain day to maximize our sale. Here is an example uh, where images of handwritten digits are grouped together when visualized in a two-dimensional space. And so generally, um, unsupervised learning is concerned with um, summarizing the data and finding insight from the data. And the third class is reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, we have an agent or a robot and we have an environment and we simply want the agent to learn how to interact with the environment. And the agent learns that by getting rewarded for correct actions. So, for example, let's say the environment is a maze and the goal of the agent is to solve the maze. Um, then the agent takes an action and if that action was good and brought the agent closer to the end, then the agent would be rewarded. And by getting rewarded for specific actions, after a while, the agent learns to take actions that result in solving the maze. Here is an example of an agent that learns how to walk by simply being rewarded for passing the obstacles and moving forward. While all of these classes are equally important, here we will be only focusing on supervised learning. And in the next slide, Arne will tell us what are the topics that we are going to cover today. In this course, we will try to teach you first the basics of machine learning. That means we will cover linear aggregation, logistic regression, and also nonlinear classification. And that directly leads us to neural networks and deep neural networks. After that, we will look at two application areas, namely computer vision and sequential data, to um, which we will apply deep neural networks. Finally, we will look at how machine learning is applied in the real world and give you some tips and um, hints where to look at. What we expect from you for this is first some basic math knowledge. So if you know derivatives, simple linear algebra, you will be fine with this course. And of course, some curiosity cannot hurt. So let's get right into it and train our first own classifier. For this, let's head over to Teachable Machine. So this is the interface of Teachable Machine. And here, our goal now is to train a classifier that can recognize whether I'm showing a thumbs up or a thumbs down into the webcam. And for this, we need to record some training data. And at the beginning, we first just record some images and label them based on whether I'm showing a thumbs up or thumbs down. All right, our first, that, that is our first classification problem. That means we need to define two classes and the first class would be thumbs up. All right, and for that, I'm recording some training data. So I'm holding my thumb here, maybe moving it a bit and we have some training data. And then our second class would be thumbs down. And again, we activate our webcam and we record some training data. And with that, okay. Now we have thumbs up, thumbs down, and this is our training data that we pass into our model. And that means that every, for every image that is in this training sample here, uh, in this training data, our model will learn to predict the output thumbs down. 
and for the other images it will always have as the desired output thumbs up. And with this we train our model. This is done in the browser so nothing gets sent to Google or anyone and that's why it also might tag a whale. But for this little data it's pretty quick. And now can, we can immediately evaluate our model and see if it's predicting thumbs up or thumbs down based on the image we are showing. And down here we see the certainty of the prediction, thumbs up or thumbs down. And as you can see, if I don't show anything, it's not quite sure. It's trending towards thumbs up, but it's not quite sure. So if I show a thumbs up, pretty good. It's, show, it's recognizing a thumbs up. That's pretty nice. If I show a thumbs down, it also shows that it recognizes a thumbs down. Okay, so we are done, right? That's nice. Not quite. Let's explore a bit more. Like what happens, for example, if I show this? What is happening here? Take a second to think about this. And what ha actually happens here is if we look at our training data, we've always um, recorded our training data in a way that the thumbs down was in the upper corner and the thumbs up was recorded usually in the lower right corner. So it might not just pick up on whether I have a thumb showing in the image up or down, but it might just recognize that I have a hand here or a hand here. And it's independent of whether I'm showing a thumb in whichever direction. So how can we solve this? Well, it all depends on our training data. So why don't we just record more training data? So for this, we just move our thumb a bit more through the image and have 170 images. Bam. And the same for thumbs down. So we move our thumbs down a bit through the image and okay, let's record a bit more so that we have somewhat even training data so that it just not tends to uh, always predict one or the other. And let's train again. Now it should take a bit longer because we have more images, but it's still rather quick because it's not that much data. 170 times two, that's little in comparison to what nowadays machine learning models are trained on. And we can evaluate again. So let's try this out. I'm showing thumbs up and I'm moving it through the image. So in most places, it's pretty good. Maybe I want to add some more data in between here. Here it's still, it's thumbs down, but besides that, pretty good. Thumbs down, thumbs down, thumbs down, thumbs down. It's still pretty certain. That's nice. And if I switch, the site, maybe it's not perfect yet, but it's getting there. So with this, it's your turn. Okay, now that you've seen how Teachable Machine works, it's time to try it out for yourself. You could try a different example than ours and um, for example, classify whether you're wearing a mask or not. That could be useful, for example, for ex applications where you want to see if someone can enter an event or not based on whether they're wearing a mask or not. Other examples are also possible if you want to classify all the objects in your room. This would be totally fine. You can add additional classes as well and just try it out for yourself. Play around with the data, see where your classifier works well and where it fails and how you can adjust the training data to serve the purposes that you want. So what have we learned? First of all, the classifier works quite well. So it is easy to train a classifier to classify thumbs up or, or thumbs down reliably given a certain input. However, if we vary everything a bit, it might not be as robust. So it's quite sensitive also to the data that we train it on. If we don't have good training data, the classifier will also not work well. Okay, but how does this work? How do these classifiers work? To explain this, let's take a look at the machine learning pipeline. 
This is a general concept that we will follow throughout this course. And there we have always some data given and we develop a model. The model can be optimized to fit the data better and this is done through training. And in the training we measure our objective function. This could be, for example, how accurate the prediction is for thumbs up or thumbs down. After training, we have optimized the model to fit the training data well, and then we can use it to do predictions on new data. And this is actually our final goal, to have a model that works well on data that is not the training data, but that is something that we haven't seen before. This is called generalization. And since we are following this throughout this course, we want to highlight where we are at in this pipeline. So we are, will always show on the right side whether we are on a slide that concerns the data, the model, or the training. And with this, I will hand it over to Mohammed for the first session on linear regression.